everyone. So someone actually reached out to me recently and they asked about my perceived hatred of the GNOME desktop. Well, it's not perceived. The hate is real. And I don't just hate the GNOME desktop. I kind of hate the GNOME developers as well. Now, somebody might say, well, that's a little negative or something like that. Okay, whatever. Here's the deal. I submit probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about a thousand bug reports a year. And I have for a long time. And about 90% of them get picked up right away. Like they look at it, they look at my methodology of coming up with, you know, reproducing the error and they submit it forward. I've done this for a long time. There are two projects that are the absolute worst when it comes to submitting a bug report. First one is the people at Debian. They're the absolute worst. Sometimes they don't respond to you and other times they're like, well, that's not a bug, that's the feature. But at least they don't piss me off. The people at GNOME, well, a lot of times they just end up pissing me off. So let me explain. I've submitted a few bug reports, probably 30 in the last 10 years, and only four or five of them have been sent through. Now, I don't care about how many get sent through or whatever. That's not even what would piss me off. What pisses me off about all of this is how everything was handled. So I'll give you a good example. The VTE. Now, I sent an inquiry about this issue of the GNOME terminal, the GNOME shell, and an error that was happening in VTE. I did this probably a year or so after Felipe Contreras submitted a fix for the issue. I didn't know this and you know for the longest time I thought the issue was me. I thought there was something that I was doing or something like that. Well no. I'm sitting there reading all this stuff that Felipe Contreras has written and it was really eye-opening because I didn't realize that there were gatekeepers. So I went back and I looked through a lot of my bug reports to the GNOME project and sure enough, they were the same people that were blocking them. It was like, oh, I, I never even paid attention to it, any of it. I was like, okay, you know, whatever. There's a lot of gatekeepers in the GNOME development community. And they're the kind of people that I don't think people like Linus Torvalds would tolerate, to be honest. And if Linus Torvalds wouldn't tolerate you, you, the problem's probably yours. I, I would submit, right? I'm just like kind of beside myself because I do have kind of an issue with something that I use fairly recent, fairly regularly, and it is a GNOME issue. And I'm just kind of torn, you know, do I actually submit a bug report or do I let it go? I know exactly what the problem is, I could probably submit a fix for it. However, I just don't know if I really want to spend the time to do it because of the gatekeeping of Christian Persh. And I was looking into this, right? Especially Christian Persh and the VTE. There's an error there and the error is kind of affecting, you know, something that I use fairly regularly. So I'm basically submitting to the people at Red Hat I get it. You don't care much about the GNOME desktop. If it kind of works, it's great. But I think you still want to have good coding practices, don't you? So I'm asking why you allow like the kind of gatekeeping that has been perpetuated by people like Christian Persh and, uh, you know, the VTE issue. Why do you allow that? Because... Here you have forced Fedora developers to work around you. Like virtually everybody has worked around this guy. And I, I un honestly don't get why you give gatekeeping status or ability to people like this. I, I don't get it. The people at Red Hat know full well why they haven't gotten a hold of Christian Persh and made him part of their staff. And that is because he does substandard work. I, I've been following this for a while now, and here's kind of the modus operandi of Christian Persh. He rejects all the real fixes, 
and then all of these perceived problems that he can conjure up in his imagination he he looks at those and they never get worked on either i mean seriously how much has he actually done in the last year or two and i'm being really honest i i, I don't want to level any ad hominem attacks these are criticisms that are professional in nature first of all i submit bug reports i get rejected okay fine that's cool but why do you have to piss people off in the process when felipe Contreras submitted his bug reports i mean he got really salty he was like your behavior is unacceptable it's like dude are you like some sort of snowflake like I, I don't get what's going on here i don't get like the point of all of this when he could have just accepted the pull request and it would have been done and over with it would have been fixed and a lot of people would have been happy so when you ask me about my hatred towards them well the thing is is do you know how badly they piss me off every time i submit a bug report do you get it i, I just want to find a solution to this because some of these problems continue to occur for more than five years and then you know the first proposal for a fix is the one that gets accepted in the end you know <laughs> i'm just too old for this shit <laughs> to be honest you know sometimes i'm just wondering like what the hell am i doing why do i even you know contribute to open source this is this is the thing that makes me wonder that very question. Why do I contribute to open source? The GNOME desktop as it stands and as it exists today should never exist. You totally gave the middle finger to a bunch of people who love the GNOME 2 desktop. You obviously don't care about the end users. Like when we have bugs that we submit and you reject for no good reason, like I said, the hate's real.